In Pennsylvania comes the Senor Fancy Pants Show, a family-friendly podcast that always takes a year off during a worldwide pandemic. But we're back now, so please give it up for your amazing host, Senor Brian Fancy Pants. Wow, hey, thanks so much. All right, you can have a seat. All right, feel free to fade out. Thanks, real audience. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 24 of the Senor Fancy Pants Show. Can you believe it's been over a year since our last episode? That's crazy. It was supposed to be a much shorter break, but you may have noticed that things got a little weird last year here on Earth. I'm sure many of you have been affected in some way by the COVID-19 pandemic, also known as the coronavirus. Well, just like many of your families, my family had to make some adjustments and learn how to live a little bit differently. And that kind of took our focus off this podcast for a long time. But my co-hosts have decided that now is the time to get things going again. As some of you know, my co-hosts also happen to be my kids, Lincoln and Brooklyn, and they will be joining me here in the studio very soon. If this is your first time listening, welcome. We are so glad you decided to join us although I do recommend going back and checking out some of our first episodes so that you can kind of get a feel for what this show's all about. Basically, we just like to have fun and talk about things that we find interesting, like animals, food, video games, movies, traveling, and so much more. And we also like to play some great family-friendly music from some of our friends. Speaking of which, I'm going to play some music right now, and then after that, my co-hosts will probably be ready to join me. So... Have you ever thought to yourself, the world doesn't need any more new versions of the Alphabet Song? Well, you thought wrong, and that's because you haven't heard the latest version from Mike Park. With the help of his friends Jeff Rosenstock and Sean Bonnet, Mike Park created this masterpiece. Enjoy. Tell me what you learned at school today. Can you make the hook on a capital J? Can you walk just like the letter K? Can you build a roof on top of your A? Can you draw the dot on a lowercase I? Can you cross your T's from side to side? Do you know your ABCs? If so, won't you sing them with me? Now A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, Y and Z, A B C D E F G, H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Hey, hey, check it out, it's Sean Bennett. What did you learn in school? Tell me, does your W look like a double V? Can you zig and zag just like a Z? Can you hang real low like a lowercase G? Does your P look down you do you know your abc's if so won't you sing them with me a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y and z a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y and z All right, that was awesome. Did you guys like that song? Yeah! All right, so those voices you just heard, those are my co-hosts, Lincoln and Brooklyn. So, Lincoln and Brooklyn, why don't you tell everyone your ages, starting with Lincoln. I'm 11. And Brooklyn? And I'm eight and a half. Eight and a half. That's right, that half is very important to you, isn't it? Okay, so now we're going to move on to one of our favorite segments, which is... Keith Brockway's Question of the Day! Keith Brockway's Question of the Day! 
So for today's question, we're going to be talking a little bit about, well, a whole lot about pasta. So there's so many different kinds of noodles, different sauces, different toppings, so many possibilities or possibilities. Am I right? Okay. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so the question today was, what, in your opinion, makes up the perfect plate of pasta? That's some crazy alliteration right there, right? Yeah. Sounds great on a microphone. I asked this question to my friends on the magical website Facebook, and right now we're going to take a look at some of these responses, and maybe you will get some new ideas for your next pasta night. Are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So the first answer that came to us was from Jeff, and he said, The perfect plate of pasta, more alliteration, is one that is on a table that is surrounded by those you love with lots of grated cheese on top. All right, I guess sometimes you just need family and grated cheese. Thoughts on that one? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah you would eat that? Cheese. Okay. And then the next response was from Allison, and she likes penne with salt and butter. Keeping it simple, nothing wrong with that. A little salt and butter. I like it. Yeah, you like that? All right, and then Vanessa said fettuccine Alfredo with chicken and broccoli. Thoughts? That sounds good. It fettuccine sounds Alfredo. Good. Do you guys know what Alfredo sauce is? It's a creamy kind of sauce, so I don't know if Lincoln would like that. Brooklyn, you would probably like it. Okay, so let's look at some more responses here. Terry said, fettuccine with Alfredo sauce, just like Vanessa just said, but don't forget the nutmeg. That's Ooh. interesting, right? <laughs> All right. I've heard of that before, putting nutmeg on Alfredo sauce. All right, the next one was Kristen, and Kristen said, tortellini with a pesto sauce, sun-dried tomatoes, artichoke hearts, and lots of Parmesan cheese. That one was a little more creative. Yeah, that All sounds right. good, actually. I appreciate actually. that. That sounds pretty good. A lot of people don't think to put artichoke hearts on their pasta, but I promise you, it's quite good. And Jason said, penne with vodka sauce, Italian sausage, and plenty of Parmesan cheese. I'm noticing a theme here. A lot of people like to put Parmesan cheese on their pasta. All right. I'm a fan, especially fresh grated Parmesan cheese. It's delicious. I'm but uh, yeah, so Jason likes to put sausage and vodka sauce, which is a little bit different. Lori said angel hair or fettuccine with a cream-based garlic sauce. By the way, that's that's some of my favorite kinds of sauces, the uh, cream-based garlic sauce. And she says to put veggies of your liking and shrimp. Thoughts? I like vegetables. I like it. You like shrimp on your pasta? Yeah, I would love that. Have you that. tried that yet? No, I haven't, but it sounds great. Okay. All right. We'll have to try that sometime. Let's see. The next response comes from Richard. This one is, um, I, I happen to know Richard, and I know he knows Italian food. So Richard wrote linguine al dente. Do you know what al dente means? Dente mm, kind of, I no. think that's an Italian word meaning like it has bite, like teeth. I don't know. I don't know the exact translation, but so it's um, a pasta that you, you don't cook so much that it's too soft and you... And uh, it has just a little bit of bite to it. Al dente. I like it. I'm talking way too much about al dente. No one wants to hear this. Okay, so you toss that with some olive oil, fresh basil, sliced Parmesan cheese, and some fresh tomatoes, and serve it with a delicate crostini, which I'm assuming is some kind of crusty bread. That sounds good. Yeah, it does. Parmesan is very popular. Yes, Parmesan is, because it just goes really well with pasta. All right, the next answer was from Daniel Darko from the band The Microphone Doctors. And here's something interesting. Daniel likes to put hot sauce on his pasta. And when I asked him what kind that he recommended, he said there's a hot sauce called Pico Pica, which is very popular in California, but I haven't seen it in any stores around here. So we're going to have to order some because that sounds delicious. I know Brooklyn actually likes hot sauce on her pasta. Don't you, Brooklyn? Yeah. Yes, but she also likes to sprinkle a little bit of adobo seasoning on there. So that's um, kind of unconventional, but that's what Brooklyn likes, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if there's any other answers. Oh, there's plenty. From Kai. Kai likes spaghetti noodles, tomato sauce, Parmesan cheese, again, shrimp, and five meatballs. That sounds... That's very specific. Five meatballs. So Kai didn't specify how many shrimp, but when it comes to meatballs, Kai knows the perfect amount, and that amount is five. All right, Gavin's kids said they like their spaghetti with bacon. Has Is that something you've tried before? No, but no. I think I would. Yes, bacon does actually go quite well with pasta, especially with a little butter in there and uh, some other stuff. Worth trying. All right, Jennifer said she likes her pasta with butter, lots and lots of butter. I know, Brooklyn, that might sound good to you. Lincoln, maybe that sounds a little too much on the butter side, but yeah. 
All I right. like having butter. Let's see what else we have. Russell likes cheese ravioli, no sauce. All right, keeping it simple. I respect that. Dave likes spaghetti with sausage, peppers, diced tomatoes, peppers. Wait, he said peppers twice. Way to go, Dave. And mushrooms, double the peppers. Ellen likes spaghetti. That's it. Nothing else, just spaghetti. <laughs> and Michelle likes pumpkin ravioli with pine nuts, some olive oil, and some arugula. That's unique. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, so Phil Lager wrote giant shells stuffed with ricotta, parmesan, and mozzarella. Marinara sauce, basil, parsley, oregano, garlic, bam. He wrote bam at the end. All right. That sounds it's a lot, lot of stuff. Very complex. Complex. All right, Phil Lager's a complex man. And Jamie, who we all know as Jumpin' Jamie, my friend who makes great music. Um, we're going to play one of his songs later in the show. He likes his pasta um, with tempeh and nutritional yeast. Now, I happen to know that Jamie is a vegan. Do you guys know what a vegan is? Yes. I shouldn't say he's a vegan. He is a human being who has a vegan diet. What is a vegan diet? It's like you don't eat anything to do with animals. Yeah, you don't use animals or eat anything to do with, yeah, any animals. So, tempeh, do you guys, have you heard of tempeh? Mm, no. It's very mm. popular among vegetarians or other people who don't eat meat. It's a soy product, so and it's made from fermented soybeans. Yeah, like I said, a lot of vegans eat it. And then the nutritional yeast, Jamie said he likes to put on there. Um, that's just like a seasoning that adds kind of a salty, cheesy flavor, and that's vegan-friendly as well. All right, so those are the answers we got. Some of them more creative than others. People seem to really like Parmesan cheese and butter. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, before we move on to our next segment, we're going to take a little dance break. If you're a loyal listener, you may remember when we played a song by Mills Trills called Put Your Pants On. You guys remember that song? You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, it is a super fun and quirky song with a lot of interesting instrumentation. Well, last year, Mills Trills decided to make a parody of that song, and uh, now it's more appropriate for our current lives, and it's called Put Your Mask On. Let's go. Put your mask on, put your mask on, put your mask on, put your put your put your put your put your mask on. First you take your ear and you slip it in, then you take the other ear and slip it in too. Then you shimmy shimmy, wiggle wiggle, shimmy shimmy shimmy, wiggle wiggle wiggle, shimmy shimmy shimmy, wiggle. Put your mask on, put your mask on, put your put your put your put your put your mask. Put your mask on, put your mask on, put your, put your, put your, put your, put your mask on. Why do we wear masks anyway? Cause we got to cover our face. Protecting friends from all the germs spreading all over the place. Why do we wear masks anyway? When they cover up my smile. Because we gotta make keeping each other safe something that we bring in style. Oh, put your mask on, put your mask on, put your put your put your put your put your mask on, put your mask on, put your mask on, put your put your put your put your put your mask on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh oh. They're not doing it. I noticed. I think we gotta go a little slower, Uncle Jumbo. Well, let's slow it then, Mills. Put your mask on. 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 Put your mask on, put your mask on, put your put your put your put your put your mask on, put your mask on, put your mask on, put your put your put your put your put your mask on. So that was Mills Trills featuring Uncle Jumbo. Go download it today. All right, now it's time to learn about an animal in a segment that we call Animals Are Cool. Animals are cool. 
Here are some facts about one of them. On this episode, we are going to talk about one of Brooklyn's favorite animals in the world, an animal that can be found in East Africa. We are talking about the giraffe. Giraffe, you're like a fuzzy brontosaurus giraffe. You are the subject of this chorus giraffe. Giraffes are a social animal and they live in groups called towers, which is an appropriate name. So now with the help of my amazing co-host, Brooklyn, we give you seven facts about giraffes. Brooklyn, what is fact number one? Giraffes are the tallest mammals on earth. Technically, they might be the tallest mammals in the universe. We don't know. Maybe there's a planet billions of light years away that is filled with undiscovered mammals three times the size of a giraffe. Sounds like a scary planet. But anyway, a female giraffe can get up to about 14 feet tall, which is about 4.3 meters. And a male giraffe can get as tall as about 18 feet or so, which is around five and a half meters. All right, Brooklyn, fact number two. A giraffe's neck is not long enough to reach the ground. That means that they have to kneel down or spread their front legs awkwardly to get a drink of water. So luckily, they only have to drink water once every few days because they also get some of their water from the leaves that they eat. Okay, fact number three. Giraffes sleep standing up. In fact, they spend most of their lives standing up. Giraffes only sleep for about five minutes or less at a time and only for about 30 minutes each day. Okay, fact number four. Giraffes have small horns on their head. Those little horns on the giraffe's head are called ossicones. The male giraffes sometimes use them to fight. Now, I'm not a giraffe, and I don't have ossicones, and that is why I go out of my way to make sure I never get into a fight with a male giraffe. And so far, I have been lucky enough to avoid those kinds of situations. All right, Brooklyn, give me fact number five. Male giraffes are called bulls, female giraffes are called cows, and baby giraffes are called calves. Yeah, calves. So they're kind of like cows. We call them the same thing. So fact number six. Giraffes have very sticky tongues. (laughs) Yes, and those sticky tongues are about 21 inches long. That is almost two feet. See, that's the reason why when I'm eating ice cream, I always try to stand at least two and a half feet away from a giraffe because I don't want a giraffe licking my ice cream. That's one of my pet peeves. Okay, Brooklyn, let's do the final giraffe fact for today. Giraffes eat a lot. Yeah, giraffes can eat as much as 75 pounds of food per day. That's uh, 34 kilograms. They spend most of their day eating. They are living the dream. So there you have it. Giraffes are cool. And those were some facts about them. Feel free to go and do some research on your own if you'd like to know more about these awesome animals. Giraffe, you're like a fuzzy brontosaurus giraffe. You are the subject of this chorus giraffe. When you take the time to record a 15-second song for your giraffe segment, sometimes you play it twice. All right, real quick, I just want to clarify something from earlier in the show. During our pasta segment, I tried to explain the meaning of al dente, and I failed miserably, so I quickly looked it up on my phone, and here is what I learned. Al dente is an Italian phrase that means to the tooth and it describes pasta or rice that is cooked to be firm to the bite. So I guess I was close, but I always try to make sure I'm giving you the right information. Okay, before we move on to our next segment, it's time for another awesome song. Last year, my friend Jumpin' Jamie released some new music on an album called Nevermind the Blocks, Here's Jumpin' Jamie. And we haven't had the chance to play any of it yet, so we're gonna fix that right now. We're gonna play my favorite song from that album, And it's called Honesty's the Policy. The tortoise and the hare were running in a race. Hare was so arrogant, she thought she owned first place. She thought she was a short thing, thought she win the prize ring. But it's never over until the lady sings. Honesty's the policy, cause cheaters never win. Cheaters never win. 
never win. difference between bad and good always lying through and through to the people he talked to when he told a lie his nose it grew and grew honesty's the policy because cheaters never win honesty's the policy the way it's always been honesty's the policy because lies are made worth it honesty's the policy because cheaters never win She was just lying, didn't even care Repeating the same lie, like she didn't even try Nobody believed her and she didn't know why Honesty's the policy, cause cheaters never win Honesty's the policy, the way it's always been Honesty's the policy, cause lies are killed with it Honesty's the policy, cause cheaters never win That song was brought to you by Red Delicious Apples. The variety of apple that will have you saying, these are definitely not my favorite, Red Delicious. More like Red Mediocre. Am I right? Yeah. All right, because everyone knows, Lincoln, that Honeycrisp are the best apples. Yep. Yeah, you know about that? All right. Although Pink Lady and Gala Apples are also very good. But this show's not about apples, so let's move on to our next segment, which is going to be our place of the day. And for this episode, we picked a random U.S. state that I've never been to, and it's a state that goes by the name North Dakota. It is home to around 770,000 humans, making it one of the least populated states in the U.S. Now, I've been to at least 40 different U.S. states, and North Dakota is not one of them. I hope to make it out there someday, though. We'll see. North Dakota became a state on November 2nd of 1889, so quite some time ago. If you don't know where North Dakota is, allow me to tell you. First off, it is in the Midwestern section of the United States. So find a map of the United States, look at the middle, and then move your eyes to the top. You're going to see Montana to the left, or west of North Dakota, and Minnesota to the right, or east. And what state do you think is south of North Dakota, Lincoln? South Dakota. That's right. South Dakota is directly south of North Dakota. I guess that's probably why they called it South Dakota. Yeah. Clever. All right. So here are six more random facts about the great state of North Dakota. Number one, the capital of North Dakota is Bismarck. The population of Bismarck is about 73,000 people. One thing you probably didn't know about Bismarck, North Dakota, is that in 2007, a group of 8,962 people decided to make snow angels outside of the state capitol building. And in doing that, they made it into the Guinness Book of World Records. Fact number two. North Dakota has fewer trees than any other state. So if you're looking to start a treehouse business, maybe North Dakota is not the best place for that because the state with the most trees is Maine, followed closely by New Hampshire. So start your treehouse business in one of those, not North Dakota. Fact number three. North Dakota produces more honey than any other state. Yeah, I never would have guessed that. I thought that bees wouldn't like the cold North Dakota winters, but I guess the beekeepers in North Dakota know how to winterize the hives, and some of them will even move their honeybees to warmer places during the winter. Seems like a lot of work, but I do like honey, so thank you, North Dakota. All right, fact number four. The geographical center of North America is in North Dakota. The town of Rugby, North Dakota is known to be at the center of the continent of North America. Some people claim that there have been some miscalculations and that Rugby is not in the exact spot, but either way, it's still somewhere in North Dakota. 
All right, fact number five. North Dakota produces more sunflowers than any other state. Wow. North Dakota is apparently a magical land flowing with sunflowers and honey. Okay, it might not be magical, but you should definitely go look up some pictures of North Dakota because it is, in fact, a beautiful state. It might be a bit too cold for my liking, but I would like to visit in the summertime. Someday. Okay, Lincoln, give us one last quick fact about North Dakota. The biggest city in North Dakota is called Fargo. Fargo is home to around 125,000 human beings. So there you go. Now you probably know at least one thing about North Dakota that you didn't know before. And some of you maybe didn't even know that North Dakota existed if you're not from the United States. But if you happen to live there, send us a message and tell us what it's like living in the magical sunflower honey state. All right, now we're going to play a song from a Grammy Award winning artist called Joni Leeds. We have played Joni's music on our show before, but that was way back before she won a Grammy. Last year, Joni Leeds created an album called All the Ladies with the help of a bunch of really talented female artists. That album just won the most recent Grammy Award in the children's music category. So congratulations to all involved on the project. And right now we're going to play my favorite song from that album, and this song is called Glass Ceilings. pretty you're so precious aren't you a darling from the moment you're born little girl made to think a prince will come save me forever be happy just like the movies i know So that's our show for today. Thank you once again for joining us here on episode 24 of the Senor Fancy Pants Show, our first episode in more than a year. 
We will be back with another episode very soon, so you won't have to wait that long this time. In the meantime, stay safe, do your homework, and be kind. Have a great week. Adios.